Since the award was officially introduced in 1982, Lionel Messi is the only player to have won the Golden Ball twice at a World Cup and only two players have scored five-plus goals and created 20-plus chances in a World Cup wow. tournament since 1966. That was Diego Maradona yeah. in 86 and now Lionel Messi as well. Come on, Jamie, we've been chatting. We've been waxing lyrical about it all yeah. morning. Oh, Give us your thoughts. Look, it, it, for me, it's the greatest final I've ever watched. Probably one of the best football matches I've ever seen as well. Um, you know, look, you can you can argue, you know, the, the 66 World Cup final for England, is, but I, I didn't see that wasn't around. So for me, that was the greatest World Cup final I've ever seen. It had absolutely everything about it. Um, you know, Lionel Messi just felt like it was his his destiny. Mm-hmm. And Bappe was like, no, I'm still here. I want this. This is my destiny. And it was like just two giants going at it. And the players around them just trying to produce and trying to get them both over the line for each other. And I mean, I, I thought Argentina were brilliant. I mean, they started the game exceptional first half, absolutely dominated. France had nothing. Mm. But I was so surprised how bad France were. And then out of nowhere, in like the 75th minute, it just the game sprung to life. And, you know, they got they got themselves back in it. Otamendi makes a silly mistake. You should deal with the first one, the flick over. He should just go and commit to it when the ball bounces first. And then they probably coast to a victory. But it gives away a soft penalty and a that's it then. You could see the French growing confidence. They knew, right, this is our opportunity. We've got to seize it. We've got 10 minutes to get something from the game. They had, They offered nothing. And then they got back in it. And then they looked like they were going to win it. <laughs> and then Argentina had to make a couple of changes and an extra time. I mean, what an extra time it was. It weren't like they were playing for penalties. Both going oh, no, for both it. Both going for it. Both, both going for it. it, it Luani should have won it for France. He's in. He's one-on-one. You think he could win it for him? And then straight from there, it goes up the other end. Martinez should do better and score. I mean, incredible. What a game. What I mean, if game. you're standing in the dugout as one of the manager of both teams, you've just got your fingers crossed because every time there was a turnover mm. in play, <laughs> both teams looked like they were going to score. Yeah. Either he must have been, had his hands in his head, the manager of uh, Argentina, when that it was, Martinez is safe. Yeah, I mean, the save from Martinez in, at the death is just, I mean, incredible. What a tournament he's had. Um, and I knew if it went to penalties, I, I said I fancy Martinez because look, I, I watch Lloris with penalties with Tottenham and I always, I never feel like he's, you know, like he's one that's going to really save a load of penalties. And for me, Martinez looked like the favourite going into it. Do we like it. his antics when he's... I don't mind it. Look, it's part and parcel of the game. Like, but why, why do we never see strikers doing something similar then? Well, because you know they're I mean? just concentrating on exactly. getting so their head it's down. It's a weird one though, isn't it? Because but, goalkeepers can do it and we all say it's fine. But... I mean, it's a funny one. I kind of understand what you're saying, but equally, I'm like, can't you just be a bit classy about what it? What do you put you off, Jim? What do you put you off? You took pens. Would yeah, I, well, I missed off? in a cup final, so I know what it's like to miss. <laughs> um, I mean, things like that wouldn't put me off. But look, the, the goalkeeper's entitled to do what he wants. You know, he's uh, uh, as he's there, he's moving around on the line and, you know, his antics where he keeps hold of the ball. At the end of the day, you've got to be confident enough. If you're stepping up to take a penalty in a World Cup final, you've already picked your spot. You know what you're doing. It's, it's irrelevant, really, what the goalkeeper does. Unless you're a cool head like Lionel Messi, where you can yeah. stand there and not even look at the ball and just look at the keeper and wait for him to move. Mm-hmm. You you picked your spot a week ago. <laughs> if, his, if, pe- his pen just about reached. Yeah, but... He just trickled it in the other but side. He knows, didn't he? But if you watch him closely, he doesn't even look at the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, the ball's not moving, right? It's a dead ball. It's not moving. So he's just looking to wait and see which way the keeper's going to go. And... He will just stand you up, stand you up until the last moment. And as soon as he sees Lloris move, he that's just rolls it, just rolls it exactly, in the other corner. You know, that's what he's waiting for. Just that yeah. movement that's going to tell him where he's going and I'm going to place yeah. it here. And I think the only way to do it with, it with Lionel good. Messi, with, to, to put him off when he takes penalties like that, is just to keep moving mm. so he doesn't know. And, him, and, and, and make, force him to make the decision. And, yeah, and yeah. force him to make the decision. But the keeper makes a decision for him. But look, it was Lionel Messi's World Cup. He, he, you know, he fulfilled his destiny. It was absolutely brilliant to watch. I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. If someone wrote a, a script out before the tournament and said, this is how the World Cup's going to go, and this is how the World Cup final's going to end, and this is what's going to happen in the World Cup final, you would have laughed them out of the room and said, come on, mate, this is so far-fetched, so cringe. This is never going to happen. <laughs> and we sat there yesterday and actually watched that happen. It was incredible. We could have been sat here now talking about the virus that had gone through the French camp, well, but you can't now, after the way they performed yeah, after but you know 80 what? minutes. They were... You know, 
look, I know Deschamps come out and said they were struggling and they looked like they were struggling. There was players who had been really like Griezmann and Tushimeni, uh, Rabio, who was who actually missed the, the semi-final through illness. They didn't look at their complete best. They looked like they were struggling for energy, but Argentina was overrunning them all over the park. But they found the way to stay in the game. And they gave they give everything they got. Fair play to France. They had a right go. And I think that's the key thing here is that because there are a few people that have messaged and, and I've just seen one come through right now uh, from Darren that's saying, look, we can't call this final uh, the greatest of all time because for 75 minutes or so, France weren't in it at right. all and it was boring. So Darren says... But it it's what happened. It's what happened once France got into the game. Once they got that penalty, it just became so chaotic and yeah. so exciting to watch. Well, um, the game was 120 minutes yeah. and penalty. So, yeah. you so, know, all right, for 65 minutes, 70 minutes, France weren't great, but they were still trying to do something. But Argentina were just brilliant. The game was 120 minutes. Yeah. And, you know, from the moment France scored that penalty, the game just come alive. And it was just, from then on, it was just end-to-end. It was you, like a basketball match. You sort of match. did think, as soon as they scored that pen, you thought, Argentina are going to crumble here because we'd seen it already. Well, they looked like they were going to lose. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. actually, they looked dead on their feet all of a sudden. Absolutely. Argentina had nothing. And, you know, Scaloni made a couple of really good changes at the right moment, which got them back into the game. And, and then they got back on top. But, I mean, Messi was sensational. How good was he? I thought all the subs that come on made an impact. The yeah. French players that yeah. come on were like Kingsley Cooman was magnificent when he came on. The, that, he was he was brilliant. Yeah, he, yeah, he really was. And Muani was really good as well. And it just shows. I know we'll talk about Southgate, but you know, top managers make big decisions in big games. You know, they were out of it, and in forty in the fortieth minute, he takes off Giroud and Dembele. Dembele was absolutely shocking in this World Cup. To be honest, I thought he was woeful. I don't know how he even started, but Giroud has been brilliant to take off that player in the fortieth minute of a World Cup final. You know, fair play to Deschamps. He's obviously, you know, that's what he does. He makes big decisions. Well, he had been struggling with a knee problem, hadn't he, Giroud, uh, prior to the, the final. But, um, yeah, it, it was massive calls that De- mm. Deschamps made. And in the end, those players that came on did have an impact for France. Um, and it was a fantastic final. But ultimately, it's Argentina that have won. Let's just get it done and dusted. The GOAT debate. Yes. It's, it's over. There's no <laughs> there's no more debating. I mean, I was I was one of them people who, um, you know, said Messi needs to win a World Cup to go down as the greatest ever because, you know, Maradona for me won it uh, for Argentina in 86. And, mm-hmm. you know, because Messi's from Argentina, there's that argument, well, he's not even a GOAT in his own country because Maradona is. But for me now, he is the greatest ever to play the game. Piers Morgan can't come on the radio station anymore <laughs> and talk about Ronaldo being the GOAT because he is not. Can it is messy. Jim, he, went, he went when he was 13. He left mm. the country. Mm, yeah, and the, the nation sort of turned against him, saying he was more Spanish than he was Argentinian. Um, and now all that's changed. I was going to say, I don't think they mind now. No, I, it's changed. Oh, I, know he had, I know he had a few difficult moments with them, but at the end of the day, he went to go and play for Barcelona at 13. You know, mm. like, he, he, and, he, and he's, he's the greatest player ever. You know, at club football, he is the greatest player ever. At international level, it was between him, you know, Maradona and Pele. And now he had to get that World Cup. And to do it in the fashion that he did it in and the way he performed in, throughout the tournament and the way he performed in the final... And how good he was at his age to do that and to put in a performance like that was just incredible. He carried that nation on his back. And his, his, the, the coolness about him, it like nothing phases him. What do you him. do if you're playing against him in midfield? What would you do? Yeah, there ain't nothing you can do. Just I mean, let him have it and keep him well, outside Well, I, I was surprised how France let him have so much fun. You know, I said yesterday, I was, I was working and I said, I can't believe France are not man-marking him. You know, if there's one game and there's one player that you need to stop enjoying himself on a football pitch. It's messy. And for the first 60 minutes, he was getting too much space. He was getting in pockets. He was being able to turn and, and drift and have you know loads of touches on the ball. And I was like, if France are allowing Lionel Messi to enjoy this World Cup, they've got this completely wrong. And in the second half, when he changed it, they come out and they, and they did. They were on him. Every time he got it, they got a bit tighter and it made it a little bit more difficult. But he's that good. He will always have a moment. You can't stop him producing a moment because he will always find a way of creating space for himself. Well, 
he says he's not going to call time on his Argentinian career. So we'll see what I that would. all means. I, I know. Like... Well, he's alluded... <laughs> I don't know straight up. Well, you would have thought... They're getting better than that, is No, it? he's done everything he's, he could possibly do now for Argentina. Yeah, it seems as though... Maybe it's just that moment that he didn't want to say it's all over yet because he just wants to enjoy being a part of this mm. World Cup winning squad. But certainly that was the indication given yesterday that he's not hanging up his boots internationally-wise anyway.